Warren Buffett has announced that he'll retire at the end of 2025. His track record managing the Berkshire Hathaway Fund over the past 60 years is legendary. Buffett has delivered returns far above the S&P 500, outperforming it by an average of about 10 percentage points annually. But here's the question. Was he beating the market through genuine investing skill, or was he simply taking on certain types of risk, risks that most of his fans didn't recognize? That's what we'll explore in this multi-part series, using real data and a powerful tool called regression analysis. By the end of this video, you'll have a better sense of whether the public's obsession with the Oracle of Omaha is truly justified. You'll also learn how to apply this same technique to evaluate any fund you're thinking about investing in. Subscribe if you want to follow along for the entire series. Put simply, regression analysis compares Buffett's monthly returns to different patterns and behaviors in the stock market. One quick disclaimer, regression doesn't prove causation. It only shows relationships based on past data. Still, it's one of the best tools we have to understand manager performance. The goal is to figure out whether Buffett's performance is truly unique or whether it lines up with known patterns like overall market trends, value investing, or small cap stocks. If his returns go above what those patterns can explain, we call that alpha. And it points to real skill, and not just luck. To do this, we'll use a free academic resource called the Fama French Data Library. It's maintained by Nobel Prize winning economist Eugene Fama and his research partner Ken French. This equation shows the structure of a multiple regression model. On the left is the fund's return. That's what we're trying to explain. The intercept, or alpha, represents the part of the return that isn't explained by any factor. Each beta tells us how sensitive the fund is to a specific factor, and each X stands for one of those factors. We introduced the concept of regression and discussed how hedge funds apply it to their models in my earlier video. There's a link in the description below. And remember to hit that subscribe button for more videos. Here's how we set it up in Excel, step by step. First, we download monthly return data for Berkshire Hathaway. You can get this from Yahoo Finance, which has data going back to 1985, more than 40 years of history. Next, Download the monthly factor data from the Fama French website. We'll start with what they call the three-factor model. Then align the dates and subtract the risk-free rate. That's just the return on a short-term U.S. Treasury bill. What you get is Buffett's excess return, how much he earned above a risk-free investment. After that, create columns for each of the factor returns. Market minus risk-free, small minus big companies, and high minus low value. Let's change their names to small cap and value so they're easier to recognize. Now use Excel's built-in regression tool. Go to the Data tab, select Data Analysis, and choose Regression. You'll code the column for Buffett's excess return as the dependent variable. Start with a simple linear regression using just the market factor. Then we'll expand to multiple regression as we add more variables. Let's walk through what those results mean. We'll start with the most basic model, CAPM, which stands for the Capital Asset Pricing Model. This model says investors should earn higher returns only if they're taking on more market risk. In our regression output, we're comparing Buffett's excess returns to the market's excess returns. The beta tells us how much Buffett's returns move with the market. It's captured by the coefficient next to the excess market returns. The alpha is the extra return he earned beyond what the market can explain and the t-statistic column tells us whether these results are statistically significant. If the t-stat is over 2, that means we're 95% confident the number is meaningful, not just noise. Buffett's alpha comes out to about 0.75% per month, or 9% a year, and the t-stat is around 3. That's strong and significant evidence that he outperformed the market in a meaningful way. His beta is under 1, which suggests he did all this with less volatility than the overall market and the t-stat on beta is a whopping 12, which makes sense. Berkshire is a stock portfolio after all. So far, the data show Buffett didn't just beat the market, he did it with less risk, which is rare. Now we'll expand our analysis by using the Fama French three-factor model. This adds those two extra variables to our regression. First is SMB, small minus big. Research has shown that small cap stocks often outperform large cap stocks over time. Second is HML, high minus low, which measures value. Stocks that are cheap compared to their fundamentals tend to beat growth stocks. These ideas have been around since the 1980s, but it wasn't until 1992 
that professors Eugene Fama and Kenneth French formally combined these ideas into a unified model, published in the Journal of Finance. The Fama-French three-factor model brought together market risk, company size, and value. It gave investors a new framework to explain how and why certain stocks outperform others. Their research showed that these factors explain a large portion of stock return variation and challenged the traditional belief that markets are always perfectly efficient. When we include value and size in our multiple regression, Buffett's alpha drops slightly, but it's still positive and statistically significant compared to the simpler CAPM model. The value factor is positive and strongly significant, while the size factor is negative and significant. That tells us Buffett favors value stocks and large cap companies. Even after adjusting for these factors, he still appears to outperform. Also, check out the adjusted R squared. That's a measure of how much of Buffett's return variation is explained by the model. It improves from 0.24 in the cap M to 0.35 in the three factor model. That means these added factors give us a better picture of what's driving his results. Here's the key takeaway. If Buffett's performance matched these known factors exactly, it would suggest he wasn't a magician, just someone who understood market behavior early and invested accordingly. But because there's still alpha left after controlling for these risks, it points to something more, genuine skill or a unique investment approach. So far, we've looked at just three explanatory factors, but there are more, including profitability, investment, and momentum. Some researchers think these newer factors should explain everything. Others say Buffett still can't be replicated. In the next video, we'll find out who's right. Subscribe so you don't miss part two of this series. And let us know in the comments, do you think Buffett's success is repeatable or was it a once in a generation anomaly?